Okay, so we're looking at two algebra equations here, and I'm saying that you want to think this to solve these type of equations. So what am I talking about? Well, I'm going to tell you that in just one second, but in algebra, you are going to be solving a lot of different equations, and every equation that you encounter could be very well uh, different. You can be dealing with radical equations, systems of equations, quadratic equations, these type of equations, other type of equations. So, you know, uh, it's a lot to kind of remember. However, uh, these things here that I'm going to be talking about, something you always want to kind of um, keep uh, aware of, all right? Because if you can kind of see these, identify these type of equations in this particular way, I think it's going to make it easier for you to remember how to solve these type of equations. So what am I talking about? I'm using this word these here. Well, I'm talking about proportions or equations where you're dealing with fractions. Now, uh, specifically, what do I have here? I have one fraction equaling another fraction. Okay, here I have one fraction equaling another fraction. So anytime in algebra you see an equation and you have one fraction equaling another fraction, just like we have here, you can always do this to solve these guys immediately, okay? Or to, well, you, may, you won't get the immediate solution. You have to do a little bit of work. However, you won't have to think about how do I handle this kind of problem. And um, these type of equations, one fraction equal to another, we call these proportions. These come up pretty frequently, okay? So you're going to want to pay attention uh, to what I'm going to be talking about here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from uh, pre-algebra, algebra 1 geometry, algebra 2, and pre-calculus. Um, I also have many courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, um, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, Alex, um, maybe the CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, and many other type of exams, I could definitely help you out because all those exams have math. And if you don't do well in the math section, you don't do well on the exam. I also do a lot with homeschooling. So if you homeschool, have a great homeschool learning program, then obviously I help those of you that just having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about wanting to be outstanding in mathematics, you know, and, and do really well, then you have to be serious about your note taking. And uh, I've been teaching math for decades. And the one thing I can point to with consistency is those students who take great math notes almost always do very, very well. And the reverse is true. Those students who kind of kind of take notes. Okay, so what I mean by that, they take notes like every other day. Uh, sometimes they take notes, sometimes they look at their cell phone, sometimes they take notes, sometimes they talk to their best friends, sometimes they're taking notes, and other times they're doing uh, homework for another class in math class. Listen, I get it. I made all these mistakes way back in the good old 1980s, except for the cell phone part, okay, because if I had a cell phone, a smartphone back in those days, I probably wouldn't have graduated because those things are tremendously uh, distracting. So you're going to have to be disciplined uh, to remain focused because that is the key to success, right? And you simply um, aren't going to be able to do well, uh, great, especially in more advanced mathematics without being highly focused on what your teacher is teaching. Now, as you're improving your note-taking, you can use my notes to study from. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so if you want to turn this into a little pop quiz, I'm going to erase this, and you want to solve these guys just to kind of uh, see um, your current level of understanding. That would be kind of interesting. But let's go ahead and get into it, okay? So here's what I want you to kind of be able to identify. So in algebra, okay, anytime you see an equal symbol, okay, that's an equation. All right, and then you start seeing some fractions. You see a fraction bar here and a fraction bar here. Then you want to be thinking proportion, all right? And I'll talk to you about, obviously, how to deal with proportions here in a second. Now, the numerator, okay, and the denominator, the numerator and the denominator could be any kind of expression, all right? We can make all kinds of crazy stuff up here. You could have x squared minus x. We could have 4 here. We could have x plus 1 and x minus 3, okay? It doesn't make a difference. As long as you have one fraction bar here, one fraction bar here, 
this is a proportion because a proportion by definition is two equal fractions. What we're saying is this fraction is equal to this fraction, okay? So when you have a proportion, then you have to be thinking about the cross product. So let's go ahead and just write two equal fractions. Here uh, I have a fraction one half. Let's think of an easy fraction that's equal to one half, right? Three over six, maybe four over eight. There's a million of them, obviously. Okay, so here we have two equal fractions. One half is equal to four over eight. So this is a proportion, okay? So what we need to do, right, when we're dealing with proportions is understand the cross product. This is an awesome uh, property of proportions. And basically it says, um, if like it's wor uh, the term um, is explaining, it's the, cro let me write it out, cross product, okay? So we're, we're finding the product going across. So in other words, we're going one times eight, that's equal to two times four. There's also this uh, phrase or this, these terms called the means equals the extremes. I like the cross product better, but basically you're saying the same thing. It's the same thing. So given an actual proportion, you know, two valid fractions that are in fact um, equal to one another, the cross product is always true. So you can see here, one times eight is eight, and two times four is in fact eight. That's true. Now that's always going to be true um, in a proportion. So if you remember this, this is how we can solve any equation when there it's exactly one fraction equaling another fraction. Now, let me make a uh, one more comment here. So let's say I had x over 3 plus x equal to 1 half, okay? Now, at this stage, I could rewrite this into a proportion, but the way this is right here, I cannot use the cross product, right? This is, you know, this is not set up. This is not two equal fractions. So just to kind of highlight that, exactly what I'm talking about. But this guy, we're going to solve these right now. This is one equal fraction. This is a fraction equal to one fraction. One fraction equal to one fraction. So I can use the cross product. So this is x times 2, or 2x is equal to 3 times 1, okay, which is, of course, 3. So this is going to be 2x is equal to 3, and x will be equal to 3 over 2, and you are done, okay? So it's as simple as that. Now this guy here, we're going to use the cross product, but I have to uh, tell you where a lot of students will make a mistake, okay? Now, you know, the cross product, the concept of it, you know, is probably pretty easy. And most of you would be like, okay, um, let's go ahead and do this. Y times 3, well, let me do this, okay? 4 times Y plus 2, all right? So that's going to be 4 times Y plus 2. Now, how many of you uh, would write this way, okay? Write 4 times y plus 2, and then we have y times uh, 3, which we'd write as 3y, okay? This is a very dangerous spot for uh, students to make um, errors because this problem, what we don't have is this sum. It's not in grouping symbols. If I wanted to be a nice math teacher, I would put in the parentheses. But sometimes you don't have the parentheses. So what students do is they, they go, oh, 4 times y plus 2. They know the proportion. Um, they know the cross product. But then they'll write this, this answer as 4y plus 2, okay, which is wrong. All right. So this is a very, very... Uh, the big point I need to make here. So anytime you're dealing with sums or differences and they don't have parentheses around them, grouping symbols, just plug in your own, okay? Because this is going to uh, keep you from making mistakes. So this is four times y plus two in parentheses like that. Now I can apply the distributor property. So now let's go and solve that. That's four y plus eight is equal to three y. And now let's go ahead and solve I'll subtract 3y from both sides of the equation, and I get y uh, plus 8 is equal to 0, and then I'll move that 8 over to the other side, and I get y is equal to negative 8. So I kind of, you know, really took the extra steps to show you everything here, but y is equal to negative 8. Now let's just go ahead and check that answer, okay? If y is equal to negative 8, is this in fact true? Well, let's move this guy over. All right, so uh, we'll put in a negative 8 right here. That's what we're thinking the solution is. So negative 8 plus 2 
over negative 8, is that equal to 3 fourths? Well, let's check this, okay? Negative 8 plus 2, that's negative 6 over negative 8. And if I reduce that fraction, negative over negative is positive, and this reduces down to 3 fourths. So in fact, negative 8 is in fact um, the actual solution. Just, you know, I kind of want to take that extra step to show you that this works, okay? So when you see two equal fractions, you want to use the cross product. You want to think of these things as proportions. It's a very easy way uh, to handle them. You'll learn uh, later on when you're dealing with rational equations, you're going to have to uh, understand the LCD and things like that. But make your life easier, okay? When you see one fraction equal to another fraction, just think cross product, but be careful with these uh, using um, expressions that don't have parentheses. You're going to have to put your own parentheses in because that can get a lot of students in trouble. All right, so hopefully this little tip is going to help you out in your mathematical uh, journeys. And if you think that is the case, please consider smashing that like button. That will definitely help me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. have over a thousand plus videos, basic to advanced mathematics. And, uh, you know, basically a playlist are organized like pre-algebra, algebra and geometry. So if you're in a specific course, you should be able to kind of go in there and, and, you know, find a lot of my content. Of course, I'm posting new stuff all the time. But my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.